Hello. Eh, buenas tardes a todos y todas. Bienvenidos y bienvenidas. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Ana Torres. I'm the executive director of Wikimedia Argentina. And this afternoon, I'm going to be moderating and for the next 45 minutes this panel. Uh, today, we are going to be talking with four amazing women that are doing a fantastic work to address one of the most important issues on the Wikimedia movement, gender inequality in Wikipedia and the Wikimedia projects. Uh, we have all of the perspectives, I think, in this panel. That's what makes it more interesting if it's possible. We have the long-term Wikipedians, we have partners perspective, and also we have the affiliates perspective. Let me introduce um, them. <laughs> so the first one is Rosie Stephenson Goodnight. Um, she is the co-founder of Woman in Red, in Red and co-wikimedian of the year in 2016. So come in. <laughs> 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 Just take a seat there. Um, next one, Eva Von, editor in chief for Historiscan, Sweden's first woman history magazine. Um, Sophie Jensen, a Wikimedia Sweden board member. Huh? And then we are going to have uh, Lina Edmar. She is the communication specialist at the Swedish Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And she's a key collaborator for the Wikigap campaign. She's currently running from one session to our session. So she's going to be late for some minutes. And she's going to be here shortly. Uh, first, before starting, I'm going to explain how this panel is going to be structured. We are going to have two very important moments. The first one is, where, of course, we are going to talk with our panelists for the first 30 minutes. And then during the last 15 minutes, we are going to do something different. We want to turn the, quest the questions to you. We know that working on gender uh, equity in Wikipedia and the Wikimedia project is something that um, some of, I mean, a lot of you are currently doing in our movement, so we want to hear from you, we want to hear what you are doing, we want to hear what your challenges are, if you are doing something different, and which are the lessons also that you can uh, share with, with us. Um, yeah, um, of, before starting as well, I want to explain a little bit what this panel is called equal, um, the equal um, edit. Um, currently, Historiscan and, and Wikimedia Sweden, we are going to hear a little bit more uh, from them, but they are currently promoting a new editing campaign um, to address and to make uh, Sweden history articles more gender equal in Wikipedia. Also, it's a good opportunity to, to see, it shows us how partners uh, and contributors, editors can come together and work for driving lasting changes on global goals as gender equity. So now let's start. Um, I think that if I talk about inequality, um, gender inequality is a problem that it happens all around the world. And I think that as an example of its importance, goal number five, global goal number five is about gender uh, inequality. I think that the different societies, we have done a lot of progresses, but we are still facing a lot of challenges. And, uh, also, the Wikimedia movement is facing a lot of challenges. We are still facing a lot of challenges. So the first question just, um, I want to make a more general question for you, then we're going to go deep. Um, what are you currently doing to address uh, the gender equity in Wikipedia or more broadly? I am the co-founder of a community called Women in Red. Women in Red is a community in 25 different languages. It started in English and it's blossomed into 24 other communities. Our scope is to create more content about women on Wikipedia. That includes women's biographies, women's works broadly construed, the paintings they painted, the sculptures they sculpted, the schools they founded, the conferences they convened, and also women's issues things like women's health, 
uh, women's suffrage, and so forth. So we've been active for four years. This is our four-year anniversary of this Wikimania. We started a Wikimania 2015 in Mexico City, and 100,000 new articles later, here I am up on the stage able to talk about it. <laughs> That's impressive. I always say that for me it's a before and after we, Women in Red was born ah. in our movement. Um, from your perspective, um, Eva, what are you currently doing, um, I guess, outside uh, yeah, I'm mainly Wikipedia, outside but Wikipedia. <laughs> I uh, own and run uh, Sweden's first women's history magazine. So it's it's basically a, a modern and very sort of gender um, conscious uh, history magazine that focuses on women and women's place in history, both kind of well-known women and lesser well-known women. Sophie from, I mean, Wikipedia Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> has been leading the conversation for so many years now. What are you doing? I mean, what are you currently thinking? I, I know that you both are partnering for mm -hmm. a new uh, campaign. What is this about? Uh, the Equal Edit uh, is an uh, initiative. Um, I was involved in Wikigap last year and it was most foc mostly focused on uh, writing more articles about women, but the Equal Edit is finding the missing parts in uh, already existing articles. And uh, with the help of experts like Eva, uh, to find out what is missing and uh, where can we find good sources uh, to actually show that this is something that is missing and then make... Um, uh, in Sweden it started with um, uh, an editathon uh, about women in Swedish history uh, that Eva helped to uh, prepare before. Uh, and that is uh, also what I've been doing mostly uh, regarding the gender gap thing. I've been organizing, I'm co-founder of a project, Kvinnliga huvudpersoner på Wikipedia. We have had weekly editathons for five and a half years now. Uh, and I've also organized uh, wiki camps for people identifying as women for four years. Mm -hmm. what's, what's, um, you, you mentioned experts. Right? <laughs> what's, what's the role that experts can play to support our work? I mean, I'm, I'm putting myself on, a, on an editor role. <laughs> what ex why experts are important um, yeah, for well, our work today? Anyone can read an article on Wikipedia and think that, oh, this article is great. Uh, and it's only if you are an expert in the subject that you know what is missing in the article. So that's why we need the eyes of experts to find what is missing, I think. I'm from, I mean, historical is a very, I mean, you do a very concrete thing, and I guess you're bringing the expertise that uh, to the equal um, edit campaign. I mean, you're writing articles or you are providing sources mm -hmm. for, for them to make, make to be able to write articles. Um, what's the role you feel that you can play um, uh, within the Wikimedia movement as an expert perspective, from an expert perspective? Yeah, it's kind of what Sophie's saying. For me, it was a matter of um, reading the article on Swedish hi or Sweden's history, which was kind of like the starting point of this um, project or initiative, um, and, uh, and just going through it and realizing how, partly how very few women are actually mentioned by name, but also how the focus of the entire article is almost only on like sort of large political uh, events and um, powerful men, and n nowhere is their focus on female movements or um, workers' movements or labor movements or anything that's kind of the s smaller things in, in history. Um, so for me, it was just going through the page and looking at what can we put in to actually make it more closer to the actual truth uh, of what happened. And from your perspective, Rosie, do you feel this uh, link between affiliates and strategic alliance or partners, strategic partners, is fundamental for making not just a more gender equal uh, Wikipedia, but also a more quality um, Wikipedia? I think this is really important, and I would even move it one step further to say that um, women in red 
uh, facilitates five or six month-long events every month. Uh, every August, we do an event called Indigenous Women. And knowing that I was coming to Wikimania, I decided personally to focus on Sami women of Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia. And I thought, I couldn't find a lot of sources in English language, but I'm pretty good with translation, especially using translation tools. And so I translated uh, half a dozen, dozen of these articles, and then I found a really good source in English Wikipedia, uh, in English language, for one of these women, and I added it, and uh, someone came along and said to me, Rosie, that really it's it's. It's in English, but it's a very poor article, and it doesn't get the facts right. And so they removed what was from English language, and we kept the sources that were in another language. So it goes to show you that the expertise is not just having an expert expert, but someone who's expert in a language who can read Northern Sami. I can't, and my translation was fine. It was adequate, but adding an English source, which I thought would make the richer article, I was wrong. And so I have to, relying on someone else who's an expert in their community seemed to be helpful in this case. Yeah, well, welcome, Nina. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, we're talking about the importance of uh, bringing experts to, uh, or partnering uh, the Wikimedia affiliates with um, partners that are experts on some topics that can help us address uh, gender equity in Wikipedia. What's the role that the Swedish Embassy has played on this? Um, because we know that Wikigap has been a massive campaign. More than 60 embassies around the world have organized activities. A lot of content has been created. Um, what's the role that you played and why did you decide to participate and partner with Wikipedia and the Wikimedia movement? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I was late. I was on another panel, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're talking about uh, the importance of bringing in experts, and I would widen it, like the importance of bringing in partners that have perspectives or that share your same call. So, I mean, we're stronger together. So I think that's a little bit uh, why we chose to do this. Uh, I work for the Swedish Ministry for Foreign Affairs, and we do have worked for ge with gender equality internationally for quite some time. But this work was... Um, strengthen in 2014 when we got a new government who's really a launch that feminist foreign policy meaning that in everything we do we should reflect women and girls rights resources and representation so uh, wikigap which is a project that we did together with uh, wikimedia sweden was an attempt to try to connect Swedish embassies worldwide together with local Wikimedia volunteers in order to bridge the gaps, the gender gaps on uh, Wikipedia. So actually from us, for us, it came one out of a, a policy idea that we believe in gender equality and we believe if we can't have gender equality, we will not achieve any of the other global goals. And two, uh, out of, a, uh, I think, um, also wish to connect with new partners. I mean, we are not used to, we're used to working with civil society and academia, we've done for a long time, but for us this uh, Wikipedia, Wikimedia moment and Wikipedia as a source was, uh, uh, I mean, it's the biggest encyclopedia in the world. I mean, power and knowledge, it's power, right? And we want to, people to be empowered. So I think that was a little bit the, the starting point uh, for, from our point of view. I want to go to the backstage of Wikipedia. What really happens? What really happens when we start editing in Wikipedia? Why? I mean, you're. I think both of you, Sophie and Rosie, you're like long-term Wikipedians, or at least you work with Wikipedia daily. Why do you? Th why do you think the inequalities persisting uh, in the encyclopedia? What are the main like barriers that we are facing? Well, the first one is history itself. Uh, 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, 1,500 years ago, 2,000, 2,500 years ago, there were no women generals. There were probably very few, if any, women politicians. There weren't popes that were women. 
So those articles dating back to those years will be articles about men and there are no women from that time period that we can say, aha, I unearthed this information about a woman general from that era. Maybe there was one or two here or there, but in general, we have to say that they were not working certain occupations that maybe they are now. But fast forward to a more common era, the fact is that there are article, there is information about women if we look back at historical records and try to dig that up, go mining for it, and once it's found, bring it to the light. I think it's a lot easier to write biographies about men because there's more information that's historically been written about them. So it falls upon us, all of us, this is a people issue, it's not a woman issue. It falls on all of us to find that information and then write about it so that we can move the needle, as I like to say, from uh, English Wikipedia is now at about 17.9% of the biographies are about women. I don't know the statistic for Swedish. 21. Ah, good for you. <laughs> 20 for the Spanish. We're lagging. <laughs> So it's that, that's one of the reasons the historical record um, hasn't supported women the way it, 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 it is now. I think things are better now, especially with having magazines that spotlight these <laughs> women. So um, I'll stop there. And yeah, I want to say something after, but <laughs> Sophie, um, why do you think this inequality is persisting in Wikipedia? Well, uh, I think uh, what um, I agree with Rosie, uh, but I also think that uh, the Wikimedia and Wikipedia projects are a mirror of how the world looks today. And even uh, when we read about people in newspapers and see them on television, uh, even today when we have uh, females, uh, women leaders around the world, uh, media is still writing more about men uh, and that sort of stuff. So uh, it's very, it's, it's hard to actually be really equal in the biogra biographies on Wikipedia when the world do not treat men and women equal. But I think it's a, there's also a, a, a danger in just counting names, because I think you also need to look at how you write about men or women, because <coughs> there's a huge difference in Wikipedia mm -hmm. and also in the media or in the world in general. We do tend to focus more on um, the physical aspects of women or their, and, and when, when it comes to men, it's more what they've done and what they've achieved. And, and even in certain articles in Wikipedia, you'll have a much longer article about a man and a much shorter about a woman because, so the name is still there, they're equal in, in the number of names, but not in the content. Yeah, and I have uh, I read um, uh, two articles, one about a man and one about a woman, and they were married, and they were both math mathematicians. And the article about the man, it was uh, only focusing on his achievements as a mathematician, and she was like mentioned in one sentence. In the article about her, there was like, on, on, almost like more than one third of the article was about how he proposed to her. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, in the Spanish Wikipedia for quite, I don't know how much time, but at least for a quite long time, Marie Curie was defined as the spouse of Pierre Curie. <laughs> um, and Pierre Curie wasn't uh, defined like this, and Marie Curie is the only person in the world who won two Nobel Prizes. Um, so, yes, uh, I agree with both of you, and I wanted to say something about what you say about the history and how history of women um, is not as well represented on the different sources as history of men, or is, is missing uh, as a source. Um, do you think that the Wikimedia projects have to change that? I mean, do we need to, um, I don't know, build other projects that can, uh, um, oral, oral knowledge that can, um, yeah, have another kind of sources to build information that way we can make um, more women visible? 
I think we need to address all the other ways that we can gather knowledge and use it in order to build our encyclopedia. This isn't just for the benefit of gender, this is also for minorities, and this is also for um, other types of groups. So I agree, we need this. Um, I want to address two examples. One is Donna Strickland. We named one of the Wikimania rooms after her. Donna Strickland won the Nobel Prize in Physics. And until she won the Nobel Prize in Physics, she didn't have an article on Wikipedia. Not because one hadn't been written, it had been written, but someone in the draft area of Wikipedia had said that she didn't meet notability policy. There weren't enough reliable sources to support having her article go from a draft state to be in the main page so everyone could see it. Now, mind you, Donna Strickland, like everyone else who works in a lab, did not work all by herself. She worked with a group including men, and the men in her group all had Wikipedia articles, but she didn't get one till the day she won the Nobel Prize. She was 59 years old at the time, and I like to say if she had been a 59-year-old man, would she have had an article before she won the Nobel Prize? We'll never know, but just think about that for a moment, and I'll give example number two. Last year, Katie Bowman is the woman who was identified um, as uh, helping to develop the first picture of the black hole. Again, Katie Bowman did not work by herself. She worked with a group of about 300 other scientists. But her work especially is why she is, became the name and face of um, the first depiction of a black hole. Katie Bowman was a 29-year-old woman at the time this happened. And each time her article was written and taken down and taken to articles for deletion for long discussions, it made me again stop and think. If she had not been a 29-year-old woman, but had been a 29-year-old man, would there have been all of this brouhaha over the fact that her name and face was associated with the depiction of the first black hole? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> just to take a note, I saw a comment on Wikipedia uh, uh, that someone believed that she was only in the newspaper because it was more beautiful to have a photo of a woman. Mm. Yeah, I want, I, I want to, to, to raise another important issue that we are facing in the Wikimedia movement, that is participation. I think that is not just about content, but just about also about participation. And I think that we we need to raise more awareness on what really happens in Wikipedia and how Wikipedia is built. And I want to, 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 to know from the partner's perspective, how can we better work together to, to bring more awareness and action on gender equity um, as partners? <laughs> Go well, ahead. it's a quite, um, well, uh, I think how you choose to address the participation question within your movement is a question to your movement, but um, you can argue yet whether you should have closed sessions or quotas or women rooms where women can feel that they can do what they want to without having the men aboard, or they're better to go slowly and have mixed group. I will not say what's best for you, uh, in the Wikigap project, uh, our aim was to work on the content, but the question very quickly came, but isn't one of the objectives also to increase the number of female editors? And we said, yeah, yeah, I, if, if it's one objective for you, yeah, sure, that, that's good, but we don't, I mean, we believe that men, that's why it's a little bit sad that we are only women <laughs> here, I mean, the most important people in the fight for gender equality might be men, actually. Uh, so we believe that in countries where you could have events or editathons or contributions in, within the Wikigap projects, it was important that it was a mixed group. In some countries you can't do that, so then you have to work what's possible in the local context. Um, but, but I mean, to, 
a good start is to make sure that women, of course, I mean, that they have the same rights as men, I believe, the same resources, and also that they are represented. I mean, I come from Sweden, I'm very lucky, I know I was born here, but you, you go somewhere else and then people are just like, you know, amazed to see a quite young uh, woman being a deputy head of mission, for instance. They're like, I didn't even know we could do that. And I mean, think about uh, the reach of your information in your encyclopedia, like to make, to, to listen to women and to show their stories, to show hundreds and millions of little girls and boys what women can do and be. That's really important, I but think. But how we as partners and affiliates mm -hmm. can come together to raise awareness, how can, what can we do together to raise more awareness about gender equity. Uh, for example, I, I, I'm, if I think in Wikigab, the mm. Wikigab campaign, the reach that it had, I'm sure it, yeah. has a, it had a huge impact in the context where it happened. And I think that a discussion and was not only set. In the con sorry to interrupt, not only in the context, of course, I mean, it did change in the cities uh, where it was held, both in, in the number of articles and in the number of people, I mean, uh, uh, contributing, but it was also like a global media reach, mm. so that people was made aware of this whole uh, challenge. Um, as I mean, it's I, I agree with you. It reflects society basically. It's not like particularly problematic with Wikipedia. I think it's just like a reflection of the uh, the global world. But I think also that maybe the partners, I mean, could help you with that, with the visibility, mm -hmm. with building projects together, uh, to find people who who shares your call, like who could co cooperate. Countries like my my own or other organisa uh, organizations. Yeah. Yeah, I was just spontaneously, Rosen, when you were talking about the difference of material existing in, for men and women in, in history, mm -hmm. that that would be a perfect project to do with partners, for instance, to, uh, because there is a lot of, at least here in Sweden, where, where women's history has been um, um, a subject in universities since the 60s, and I think the same in America, sure. there are so many competent professors and historians and, and scientists, or not scientists, researchers, who uh, have knowledge and the material is there, so that would be like a perfect merge, I think, to do, to do a collaboration with um, historians and researchers who have the material you need for writing articles. the articles. Yeah, and um, maybe do something like a wiki gap, or do like a um, some kind of project to highlight that um, that work, um, I think. Because for me, as an as an outsider, uh, and we had a little chat about this before we got up on stage. For me, I think also like if you're not in the Wikipedia or Wikimedia world, um, it's quite daunting to go into, even if you have the edit-a-thons and you have them sort of um, arrange the meetings where you tell people how to use Wikipedia and all that sort of thing, it is quite daunting and it is quite discouraging when, if you finally manage to actually write something, it disappears because someone <laughs> goes in and edits it away. Um, so I think it's partly necessary maybe to do something about the organization or the culture within Wikipedia, but also important to, to show people from the outside that it is doable and, and to open it up to more than just the already sort of um, the people within the Wikipedia world. I mean, you're from the outside. Do you know bef before how, how, we pe how we Wikipedia was built? I mean, you imagine that there was people volunteering behind? I knew just because a couple of years ago I was in like a little mini editathon, so um, and we actually had someone from um, Wikimedia Sweden to help us, so he explained the whole thing. So since then I've known, but I didn't before then. No, I knew it was partly volunteers doing it, um, mainly because um, as a journalist you're, you're advised to, to not believe everything you read because it is volunteers <laughs> uh, to always fact check uh, before you use something. <laughs> uh, but I didn't know to what extent um, the, how many people who are actually in there and that it's actually open for everyone. I didn't know that to begin with. So that, that was news for me. 
Uh, let me build on that a little bit. I think also as an outside Wikipedian that it's uh, it's lacking, at least in Sweden, but I think in many places based on what I get from the embassy, like uh, knowledge of how Wikipedia is built. Mm. You just think magically that somebody just like it just happens, I don't know, uh, artificial intelligence or something. <laughs> and then when you just start to think about, oh my God, it's people, like volunteer, like normally people, like, like you and me, then it also becomes... Um, uh, a call, like if you want to see a change, like you can, I mean, if you can also try to address that gap or that change yourself. So I think maybe it could be useful uh, in the overall like fight uh, towards uh, gender equality also to, uh, uh, to make it more visible how Wikipedia actually is, uh, is um, h how it works. Yeah, that could be a, a, a great uh, way that partners could help. Yeah. Just a quick question before we go to the audience. Um, I think that we, I mean, I don't know the, the, um, Lina and Eva, but I'm sure that Sophie and Rosie know, and most of you know that we are undergoing a, a strategic process. Um, which, which are the opportunities this process brings to us, and we are the, the challenges we're still facing. For those of you who may not be aware, we've been going through a movement strategy process for at least a couple of years. We developed a strategic direction in 2017, and the last year or so, nine working groups composed of volunteers, members of the Board of Trustees, um, some of the employees from the Wikimedia Foundation have been working on developing a set of draft recommendations. And I belong to one of those teams, the one on community health. So let me say this. I am 65 years old. And if this movement strategy is supposed to get us to 2030, I will then be 76 years old. I will not be sitting at the table talking about movement strategy at that time. So I'm very vested in thinking that the work that's being done now actually comes to fruition, that something comes from it, that the diversity group who's working on its um, recommendations, that those get reviewed carefully, that the community has its say <coughs> about what it thinks, and that when the recommendations become harmonized, that all the work that they've done for this long period of time um, doesn't go to waste but actually gets implemented. And then the same is true for community health, the group that I represent. I want to make sure that we have a, a kinder, more gentle, more civil society across the Wikimedia projects so that we can do our work, so that people understand that just because the way a man has a discourse with another man on a talk page might be okay, maybe man speak is okay to use a certain tone, and one may not think that that's not civil between the two of them, but when you bring in others who are not men, be it non-binary or women, or whoever else, that there might be someone who thinks it's uncivil, and if at least one person thinks so, it has to change. That's the only way that we will be able to grow our community so that everyone feels they have an equal voice at the table. Yeah. Anything uh, from your side? Yeah. Just to wrap up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe that the uh, movement strategy could... Um, uh, make it easier for us to talk about these topics and hopefully also make it easier for us to uh, work together between chapters and communities and find better ways of com communicating and helping each other. And what I might uh, what I might be a bit afraid of that is that it's um, great to talk about, but then it lacks in action or uh, since there are many things in the movement strategy, it's not the priority. I hope that we'll prove otherwise during the years to come. Yeah, thank you so much, the four of you. Thank you for being here and for your testimonies. It's been so inspiring. Now I want to turn the questions to the audience. I don't know if you've seen that you have like a small cards. Do, do you have like a small cards? Yeah. These are because we, are, we want to ask you to write down 
any advice, I mean, one advice or one learning or one project that you are doing, we are then gonna put all this together and share it uh, with the movement. Um, we can do it, do it right now, I mean, two minutes to write down an idea. I mean, it can also be in Spanish if it's fine, better for you. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I don't talk any other language, but. <laughs> so, two minutes. So, are we done already? Yeah. Raise your hand if you're done. Nobody? No, not yet. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Sorry. So are we done now? Raise your hands. Who is done? Okay, more or less. Okay, great. Um, now I want you to participate. Um, first of all, I would like to hear from your project. There's anyone in this super big room that was, wants to share with us what, do you, what you are doing to address and to close the gender gap in Wikipedia. Any, any of you want, willing to, to share it with us? Over there, Samantha? Yeah, Samantha is gonna be helping. <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Alex. I'm non-binary non slash female. Uh, and I just wanted to say that I took part of a writing camp for uh, women and non-binary that Sophie uh, organized. And I really want to stress that the possibility to... Sorry, my English, you know. Uh, my, if I hadn't gone to that writing camp, I would not be a Wikipedian today, pretty much. And a thing that really attracted me to it was that it was just women and non-binary people. Sure, invite the men, do that. But first, I think we need to empower the non-binary and women to like meet in groups, to get together, to like pep each other up. And when we've done that, sure, we can go out in the world and fight the good fight. But sometimes we have to start separatistic to then go all inclusive. So thank you, Sophie, also. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I will uh, be doing my own writing camps next year in your shopping, so holla at me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any other example? Yeah, we have, okay. We have some people there, and then we have two more hands here. Hi, um, good day everyone. Um, sometime in uh, 2016, we, we had this uh, project that we worked on in Nigeria called the Igbo Women Wiki. So the, the essence um, mostly was um, to translate the existing, existing articles 
on women on the English Wikipedia um, to the Igbo language. But then while we were doing that, we realized there were not so many. So we then had to also start creating. So we would have to, um, at first we would create on the English Wikipedia then translate to Igbo. But at the point we were like, since we were actually very specific about what we wanted, so we just um, focused on the Igbo language platform and then we started creating um, a whole lot of articles. So it was quite successful. Um, we had mostly women um, join us for the project and then that then gave room to birth in the, the, the Igbo language um, user group. So we have almost an 80% um, women membership of that user group. So what um, I've learned from that experience is, yes, we're talking about equal edits, but then what happens often is when you have a lot more women in the room, they would want to write about women. So if we are looking at the content, like um, um, the lady from Historica talked about, you also have to look at who is actually writing this. So if we encourage a lot of women to edit, they would most likely write about women. Thank you. That's super interesting. Uh, I'm gonna be back to you, but I ha we have two more hands. I mean, someone wanted to say something here and there. Oh yeah, okay. okay. Then I cut it short. <laughs> hey, I'm Greta from Wikipedia Albania and one of the co-founders of Wiki Women in Red in Albania. We started in Ezinolario actually with Rosie for the Albanian language. There were 22 articles about women biographies and... I um, mean, you 22, you say 22? 22 articles, yes, two years ago. And now we have almost 700 articles about women in Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, actually in Albania, since we don't have that much uh, active uh, active editors, we don't have that much fight about ed uh, deleting articles. What we missing is the resources to write about women's, good resources to write about women's. And what we are focusing on, especially with Christina, it's uh, women's who did very good job in the communism time, like very uh, different projects and stuff. We are facing a lot of problems with the resources, but uh, yeah, we are almost 1,000. So let's see how that works out. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> wow, good job. Hi, I'm Sherry with AfroCrowd. And um, we've had a great opportunity to work with uh, a few of the women on the stage, actually. Um, we did Wikigap, we've worked with uh, Rosie before, and um, we've had events, uh, monthly events since 2015. Um, AfroCrowd was started by a woman and um, has a lot of women leadership. And uh, we also um, work with, uh, uh, different organizations that are often women-led, and we find that um, in uh, the last almost five years that we've been at it, that um, uh, when you work with women-led organizations, um, they are very motivated um, to, um, and their networks are motivated to continue the conversation on um, editing about more women and finding other opportunities to work again uh, to do edit-a-thons um, concerning women. So uh, that's been a very positive experience to work with, especially since we work with uh, women of the African diaspora. Um, it's been great to also get to work with some of the women in uh, organizations um, in the continent of Africa, as well as um, um, in different African diasporas in different parts of the world. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I ha we have two more, and yeah, then we just have to wrap up because I think we are. Hi, I am from Vicky Donas in Catalan and Vicky Mujeres in Castilian in Spanish. Now, why I speak Spanish? Because Anna, please, you can translate. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, creo que la brecha de género no se reduce porque aumenta constantemente biografías de hombres irrelevantes. Okay, I, thi I think that the gender gap um, 
I mean, reducing the gender gap is very difficult because the amount of articles that are written by men that are not relevant grows every single day. Ana, toca traduir... Sí, sí, tradueixo. Gràcies. Bueno, en castellà t'ho dic en... Era en català? Vinc, català. Així fem multilingüe. Soc Montserrat Boix, cofundadora de Wikimujeres. She's Montserrat Boix, cofounder of Wikimujeres. I volia plantejar una reflexió en el foro en relació... Tinc la sensació que es confonen moltes vegades en el nostre moviment de Wikimedia. She feels that in this movement we get confused sometimes with topics and terms. Entre el que són les polítiques de gènere... Between what policies of gender are. I les polítiques sobre les dones i ja no diguem sobre feminisme. I les polítiques sobre les dones i el feminisme. Fa sentit? Per exemple, em preocupa que en la conferència, en tota la conferència del Wikimania, pràcticament no hi ha la paraula dones en el programa. She is worried that in all this, I mean, if you look into the program of Wikimania, the, the word women is not present in, all the, in any part of the program. I ja no diguem la paraula feminisme. And, I mean, either feminism as a word in the program. Eh, constato que el fet de que la reunió es faci eh, aquí, en aquest país, on s'ha treballat molt el feminisme, fa que els continguts doncs eh, trobem continguts sobre dones i feminisme pel fet de que estem en aquest país i que la part d'aquest país aporta feminisme i dones. Uh, she highlights the, the, the um, yeah, she highlights that um, the conference is this year taking place in Stockholm and Sweden is a country that leads uh, this discussion uh, and has specific policies, um, yeah, Bill's policies around, around feminism and, and women, and she's happy for that. Pero en el moviment Wikimedia, globalment, eh, tenim una carència i tenim una confusió entre dones i gènere. S'han de treballar els dos punts. And, but when it comes to the Wikimedia movement, uh, we have a huge confusion confusion between what gender means and what women means. I mean, um, we need to work in the two of them, but separately. I mean, sí, not an... confusing the both of the topics and terms. No? I animo a que creem grups de treball també per incorporar la història de les dones, per exemple, a Wikipedia, els drets humans de les dones, perquè tenim moltes... els drets humans LGTBI, per exemple, de tots els països, però no tenim els drets de les dones de tots els països, no? Seria un exemple. Sí, i ella encoratja a continuar treballant en construir més content sobre dones a Wikipedia, però també sobre els drets humans de les dones, perquè tenim... Uh, a lot of articles related to LGBT human rights, but not human rights, women human rights per articles país. in Wikipedia. Bueno, era, era I think my best. So I think that we run out of time. So thank you so much, everybody. Um, I think that there's still a lot of things that challenges we are facing, a lot to do. Um, we are a huge, I mean, there's a, this movement is doing so much to address this issue, and I think that we are all very committed to m make this happen. Um, so thank you so much again, the four of you. Thank you so much to all of you that come today and for paying attention and being here and uh, spending this time for us. And also thank you so much for the foundation for giving me the opportunity to moderate in this panel. And if you have any questions, just reach out to us uh, anytime. We're gonna be around for one more day, and 
a lot of things can happen in one more day. So, <laughs> so let's, I mean, anything you need. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.